Let's take a look at the new um, challenge I just added here, because this is the one that took me three weeks to do. Uh, so I was planning to, oh, I was going to show you XR. I think I'll put that off for next time. We've got VB30 is where I want to go today. This one, tiles. Actually, this one took me about three weeks. And um, however, it doesn't have the efficiency. There's one coming up, which I, uh, let me just mention it. I think it's already on the list. Yeah, this combat game. Okay, I'm going to do this instead. The combat game has an interesting efficiency thing, which is in the, in the, uh, in the spirit of what we're talking about today. Okay, this one here, you have a card game. And the card game goes like this. Each of you starts with a deck of cards. Now, so player one has these five cards, player two has those five cards. All you do is you play the top card, and whoever has the higher card gets both of these cards put in their deck. So nine and five are played, nine wins, so you add nine and five to player one's deck. It's now longer. Now the next time, you play two and eight, so player two wins, so they get eight and two. Next time you play six and four, so those six and four are added to the first deck. So the first thing you can notice here is it's not clear that this is ever going to end. The cards are never thrown away. They move from one hand to another. This could go on for a really long time, like maybe forever. This is a strange game in that regard. Now for those particular decks, it is going to change one to 10. 10 is going to win. This one's getting longer. Then they're going to win the next one for eight and five. And then they're going to win the next one for four and nine. So now they are, um, this deck's down to one, that's are gonna win when one deck is empty. So in this case, after 29 rounds, it actually ends. Um, but that's an issue. Now one thing that can happen, and then there's a way to calculate the total, seeing who wins. So that's one simple version of a game, and here's a long list of things to try, and it won't take forever to f implement that game and find out how this works. Um, all right, so this is the structure of the game, however, the second half of this gets very interesting. The next half makes recursive combat. So now here's the game. You start with the same two decks. Um, all right, now the first thing you do is you check to see if these exact hands have been seen before in this game. If they have, you're in an endless loop and the game will never end. So they have a rule to determine who wins in that case so you don't get stuck in an infinite loop. So that's one thing. But what's more interesting is if both players have at least as many cards remaining as the value of the card they drew, then you make a recursive game. So here is a small game that would loop forever. That's not very interesting. This is the interesting one. You start with these two decks. Now, you play nine and five. Now, nine is a big number, and this person does not have nine remaining cards. So you cannot recurse to another game. So you just resolve it like the last one. Player one wins. Now we have two and eight. Well, eight is a big number, and you don't have eight cards remaining in this deck, so again, you don't recurse. Six and four, six is too big. Three and seven, seven is too big. One and 10, 10 is too big. Nine and eight, eight is too big. Five and two, you don't have five remaining cards here, so you don't recurse. Six, you don't have six remaining cards here. Nine and 10, now you play four and three. Now four, there are four remaining cards here. And three, there are more than three cards here. So now you freeze this game and make a recursive game containing just those subdecks, nine, eight, five, two, and 10, one, seven. And now you play this, and this could recurse again. In this case, it's gonna make a second game, and the second game is gonna finish and go back to game one. Then game one is gonna play another sub game, which we're gonna call sub game three. It's, at, it's only one level down. We could have called it two again, but they chose to number all the games sequentially, which took me a while to implement. Now that's a case where a global variable helps. And then that calls game four, back to game three, three, four again. Eventually you have a fifth sub game, and this one actually ends at some point. So that's interesting. So there's a strange thing that goes on and on. The interesting thing is, first, they said, okay, now solve this one up here with these numbers. And I started it, and it just went on and on and on until it crashed for exceeding the length of my lists. So I made my list longer, so I made my list longer, and made them longer again until it was like 3,000 layers down, with three, and it still wasn't finishing. So I looked online for people who had solved this original puzzle years ago when it was new, and they said, yeah, when I did it that way, it runs really slow. I had to let it run for six days to finish. 
So I decided not to give you that one. That's a little too cruel. But the interesting thing, which I have not figured out yet, which I invite you to figure out. So what I did was I shortened this. Instead of giving you these, which will take six days to solve, I shortened the list to one that only takes about half an hour to solve. It only takes um, over 2,000. I thought it was only over 200. Anyway, number of subgames is only a few hundred or a thousand. And this will converge in like half an hour in Google Colab. Um, but the other one will take six days. However, I found somebody that said, yeah, the first time I did it this way, it took six days. So I put some more thought into it. And I wrote a solution that only takes 30 lines. And it converges in 30 seconds. So there is some much, much, much smarter way to do this. And I have not understood it yet. But if I do, I'll add it in. Um, this is the dumb way, where you actually create all these lists, and you keep moving all the elements in the list for every round. There is some way to avoid moving those cards around so much, to an unbelievable extent, to make it much, much faster. And I think I mentioned when I started uh, talking about this course right at the beginning, there are capture the flag contests like this, and I've been in them, where they have some puzzle like this, and I can solve it, but then level two is make it 10 times faster, make it 10 times faster again, make it 10 times faster again, and I've not been able to solve those higher levels. But if you master these techniques, you can do that kind of stuff. So I'll let you know how much progress I make figuring it out. Uh, several of these ones I've given you are not as hard as the original. I've cut parts out of it that seem too hard. But um, I say, this, the advent of code stuff is amazing. It could be totally designed for this class, because this is very standard stuff. You'll find textbooks going back decades covering the same topics in the same order. These are the essential topics of how you make good code and how you make fast code. And there's uh, any series of puzzles will just pretty much follow the same track of presenting you with problems that are more and more like the real problems people have to solve that require these more clever techniques to solve them efficiently. So anyway, check that one out, and I'll talk about it. I'm happy to answer questions as people struggle with it. This, this one didn't take me too long to do inefficiently. Um, but anyway, that's, I think that's enough for today, BP32. Let me check for comments in the Twitch. There are no new ones. All right, I'm going to stop this recording.